96.7 WORX. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. It is 9.04 here on Telegraph Hill and the final Tuesday in the month of July. And that means it is once again time for Cop Talk brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. AJ Brammer here in studio and joined once again by Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace and the Chief of the Madison Police Department, Dan Thurston. Sheriff, Chief, thank you so much for coming on the program once again. It's always our pleasure, AJ. Thanks for having us. Good morning. Yeah, we definitely uh, look forward to the program every month. Um, so just diving right in, Sheriff, uh, what's new with your department? Uh, jail population. It's uh, it's actually uh, rose uh, dramatically here in the last month. Uh, I think it kind of coincides with the uh, significant drug arrests that we had here in the community uh, through the Regatta weekend. Um, our jail population uh, currently sits at about 140. 145 so it uh, it makes it very difficult however uh, we're, we're still maintaining um, one increase we have seen is in the uh, female population uh, when I first took over as sheriff generally we would have 16 18 uh, ladies in our jail a month uh, now we're averaging about 45 so that uh, within itself creates a uh, significant issue but we've been able to adjust uh, move some people around and uh, and we're maintaining but uh, but it's a uh, very concerning, um, you know, if it continues to rise, uh, you know, how we're going to how we're going to manage and maintain that. We like to try to keep all of our local inmates in house uh, uh, for cost reasons, and uh, but it gets to the breaking point where we, you know, we may have to look elsewhere. So we'll see how that goes. Um, like I said, on the positive side, I mean, there there were significant drug arrest, and uh, um, you know, we got to continue to do that. You know, we got to keep our foot on the gas when it comes to narcotics in this community. But uh, on the flip side, dealing with the uh, with the number of inmates, so uh, we'll continue to work at it and uh, and maintain and uh, we'll see where it goes from here but uh, it's uh, I'm just very appreciative of the effort that uh, that's jail staff puts in on a daily basis to to maintain that and, and very appreciative of law enforcement in this community as we continue to hammer away on the uh, on the narcotics issue uh, you said it's the current population is around 140 what is the population for the county jail or excuse me what's the capacity 108 108 so, exactly so yeah. so you wonder how we do that we have uh, you know of course there's extra spaces in there that we can utilize sure. what we call stack of bunks and, and those type of things so everybody is receiving uh, you know uh, the treatment that they deserve in, in jail as far as uh, you know the sleeping uh, arrangements and those type of things and, and meals so nobody's uh, nobody's being unduly punished but uh, sure. it's just uh, just the vo you know sheer volume just uh, creates more of an issue right I know that you know the recent drug arrest that's gonna have an issue or that's gonna have an impact on it and also we've talked about before where under the new the new criminal code with level six felonies are housed locally correct and that also plays yes. a factor yeah you're right absolutely it does uh, i think we currently have a 11 level six felonies and basically what happened is uh you know prior years and, and years before that the level six felons or class d felons uh, what it used to be would go to the department of corrections and serve out their year and now if you're serving 365 or less 365 days or less and you serve them in your in your local county jail so i think we have 11 now uh, which has created an issue from my understanding through throughout all the counties uh, you know some have more than us but uh, but we are reimbursed we are able to charge the state uh, for right. housing those inmates in our facilities so uh, you know there is some money's coming back to us but uh, like i said just the sheer volume creates an issue and, and going back to what you said about you know part of why the volume has gone up a little bit the recent the recent drug arrest you know that's a you're constant well i know I, I see the press releases so i'm constantly seeing you know the efforts that are being made and You've said before on the program that it's a pro it's a problem you can't arrest your way out of but this obviously you know getting these guys off the street is a big step right it is a problem we can't arrest our way out of that's why we have other programs which we'll talk about here in a minute that uh, that certainly help us out tremendously but uh, but we got to continue like i said to keep the foot on the gas because uh, you know as we've seen in other counties if we uh, if we let up or or back off uh, these issues can certainly take over a community in a hurry and uh, and we're not about to let that happen here in jefferson county so that's Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace and uh, switching over to uh, Madison Police Chief Dan Thurston. I know, Chief, uh, you know, unfortunately this past month we lost a member of the Madison Police family. We did. Uh, very sad circumstances. Uh, uh, one of our canines, Eros, uh, we lost him to a, a medical situation commonly known as uh, twisted stomach syndrome. Uh, his handler, Captain Munt, was uh, out of town on vacation when this occurred. He was being uh, boarded at one of our local veterinarians. and. Uh, which they take great care of him, but uh, it's just one of those freak things medical-wise. And uh, we did take him to uh, Purdue to, to have an examination done to, to determine cause of death, if for no other reason for closure for the family. Um, you know, we often 
we view him as, a, as an officer of our department and he is a you know a dog and a canine but at the end of the day he's also that family's pet and uh, you know we officer months children uh, love him as as much as it would if it was just a, a a normal dog or a normal pet so we wanted some closure for the family we've had that done uh, uh, we were are planning a proper memorial service for eros and and once we have his remains back we will we'll have that memorial service for him uh, eros was a um, he was a hard-working dog for the department he was he was uh, very dedicated and very focused when when he was working and he did a great job for us um, he'll be missed uh, i'm sure at some point we'll explore some options for a replacement but uh really until we have that memorial service i, I think that would be uh um, not the right thing to do with regards to uh, Eros. I think he deserves a proper memorial before we ever move on and look at other options. But I'm sure that will be a plan moving forward. Certainly, you know, you like you said, you you have to take that you have to take that step eventually. But for the time being, it is you know, like you said, he was a pet, but he was a member of the department. Absolutely, and very dedicated, focused officer. Excellent. So, um, are there any other? Besides, unfortunately, besides that, lean off, <laughs> lean off a down note, obviously. But what else is new in the police department? Uh, we have a new hiree, Philip Wimpy. He is currently at the academy. We're, we've tried something different. Uh, we're sending actually uh, the Indian Law Enforcement Academy now offers an academy at various satellite locations around the state, and one of those locations is Evansville. So we're sending him to what they're calling the Southwestern Indiana Law Enforcement Academy in Evansville. Uh, this is week two for him of uh, 17. So we'll get him back in November but um, uh, we're excited to have him. We, we think he'll be an excellent officer. Uh, he scored very high through our interview process, and we're excited to have him on board and get him through his training and get him back to work. That's excellent. And um, I know uh, this is the first time uh, we've talked to you on the program since the Madison Regatta. Right. And I know these were numbers that came out earlier in the month, but touching on that again, it was a relatively – Things were relatively quiet this year, right? Yeah, I, you know, I hate to jinx us going into 2017. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, the numbers came out. We ended up with about 10 arrests for the weekend. Wow. And uh, we have uh, some weekends where there's no festivals where we end up with 10 arrests. So, right. um, yeah, it was 10, and I think the state police had one, and I don't know if the excise had any or not. But, uh, um, you know, I, and I always equate it back to, and uh, Sheriff Walls can probably tell stories uh, longer than when I was here, but my first uh, uh, regatta as a police officer was 1993 and between the time the parade started on Friday and the end of the final heat on Sunday we arrested about 180 to 185. Wow. And now we're at 10. So uh, we'll take that you know and, and uh, I like to contribute some of that maybe to aggressive law enforcement over the years. Also uh, um, public service people having the the uh, word out on um, the dangers of, of <laughs> drunk driving and, and those types of things so hopefully you know people are smarter uh, I know regattas worked hard to make it more of a family event and uh, I'm sure that's part of it too so um, we'll take it for whatever the reason is we'll take it and uh, hopefully that trend continues in the future that's a, a sheriff I know that you you guys assist in the coverage of regatta so yeah quite quiet for you guys as well <laughs> Yeah, very quiet. Uh, you know, generally the uh, county jail, uh, uh, unfortunately, reaps the benefits of the arrest made on Vaughn Drive. But um, <laughs> this year, uh, it uh, it went very well. Very few issues. Uh, as the chief said, I think there's only ten dozen arrests made, and uh, a very manageable situation. So, uh, you know, we're thankful that uh, that that went off very well. We certainly, certainly don't miss the uh, high volume arrests. That's for sure. <laughs> You can catch us online anytime at WORXradio.com or on your smartphone or tablet. Go to the TuneIn Radio app in the App Store. Once you download the TuneIn Radio app, type in WORX in the search engine. It'll bring us up and you can listen all the time, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Again online, it's WORXradio.com. This is A.J. Bramer here in studio up on Telegraph Hill. Big thanks to Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace and Madison Police Chief Dan Thurston for joining me once again for the program. But for this month's edition of Cop Talk, we also have Amber Finnegan from Jefferson County Community Corrections coming on the program. Um, Amber, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. And so um, just for the folks out there that don't know a whole lot about 
what you guys do, what, what goes on at Community Corrections? Um, we are an arm of the court, so basically we provide um, services to people who have either um, been sentenced or pretrial services for people who haven't been sentenced yet. Um, we also do uh, early release for prison um, as well. So basically um, we, we provide um, assessments and services for offenders. Um, we, they come in, we figure out what's wrong with them, um, and then according to their level, we call it a risk assessment, the level of likelihood that they're going to commit a new offense determines how closely we supervise those people. So people that we don't, that through an assessment, don't really believe that they're going to be committing a new offense, we don't really do a whole lot with, but those people who have usually our repeat offenders and that kind of thing, um, we work with them more intensely. Um, so supervision wise, some of those people go on electronic monitoring and they have the big GPS bracelets on and we can monitor their every move um, or it could just be regular reporting um, a number of times a week or whatever. Um, so we provide assessments, um, figure out what's wrong with them, just like if you were to go to the doctor, you would get an assessment to figure out what um, services you needed and whatever kind of programming and stuff you need. And then we refer out to different programmings. We use LifeSpring and Centerstone within our agency for mental health and substance abuse treatment services. We use Real Works for employment agencies and other employment services around there. And then we also deliver a lot of cognitive programming with our offenders. Um, we do that separately between males and females um, and just trying to change their way of thinking, trying to change their reasoning skills, trying to change their um, thought processes to help them make better decisions in the future. Right. And, yeah. and arrest isn't just an open and shut situation. You know, every right. every time you arrest somebody, there's going to be different circumstances. And so this, your department kind of handles all that. Huh? Right, right. So yeah, we are kind of the experts to figure out okay, so what is the reason why this person committed this crime and what can we do to help them not do that again in the future? That's excellent. And I know that you guys, this program has... You've been expanding you right. know, as time's gone on. I know you just recently, or somewhat recently, moved into a new facility, correct? Yes. Um, we are, have been in existence for six years. Um, in that six years' time, we've gone from zero offenders to last year we served 468. Um, we currently serve about 300, um, and we've grown to about 13 staff. So um, we have progressively just building hopped it seems like for the past um, six years and we have finally we're in a space now where um, we, we have adequate space to actually do our job we have group rooms to facilitate everybody has private offices to you know meet with their clients and, and that kind of thing so we were very excited about the opportunity to actually be able to function and do our job the way we need to well, that's excellent and I mean it's obviously it's a valuable resource to the community yes yes um, we, we try to make our community better because because a lot of these people, they just haven't had um, the chance to be able to get treatment or um, had any level of support or whatever. Um, so, you know, we try to establish those connections, get them into the community and get them into programming that they need so they can um, be well if they choose to be so. And I'm sure the, uh, the sheriff and the chief can talk about, talk about it a little bit, just about, them. Um, you know, it's a it's a, a necessary part of what you guys do. Yeah, absolutely. Can you imagine what our jail population would be like if we if we didn't have Amber in her in her community corrections program? It would be it'd be unmanageable. And she just does an outstanding job. She and her uh, crew uh, work tirelessly down there uh, to make this program work the, the best it possibly can. And um, and we're very appreciative of, of all her efforts. She's uh, taking this uh, uh, ball initially, uh, starting up the program and ran with it and, and just done a phenomenal job. Uh, Chief, anything you want to add well, to that? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I just want to echo the sheriff's comments and, and the dedication of Amber and her staff and f what they do for our county and our judicial system. And um, I think at the end of the day, probably all three of us are after the same thing, and, and it's one thing um, to, to deal with an offender one time, and it's something else to deal with them again in the future. And, and hopefully, uh, through her services and in her uh, community corrections as a whole we can change the outcome of, of someone's life and um, maybe the outcome of several people in the county's life if we can reap um, if an offender can reap the benefits of what her services offer that's excellent uh, anything else uh, amber you want to add about the program um, I don't
think so. We just we stay really, really busy, and um, thank you for having us. And a lot of people don't know what Community Corrections is because we're so new in our community, but um, just to let people know that we are out there. We're trying to get people into services and make our community better. Right, and I think that's, you know, you guys do a good job of clarifying, you know, kind of misconceptions, I guess, about criminals, you know, when they come on and, or when they, when they come off the street, when they get arrested, you know, knowing that they are going into a program like this and they are getting help, I think that's just, it's a valuable resource. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. It absolutely is. That's Amber Finnegan from the, the uh, Jefferson County Community Corrections uh, joining us on Cop Talk along with Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace and Madison Police Chief Dan Thurston. Big thanks to Amber for coming on the program. Talk about that program what the, and what Community Corrections does for the community. We talked as we just got done talking to Amber Finnegan from uh, the county's community corrections program. That people, you know, know that you guys are out there, but we don't always know what it is you guys are doing, what goes in the job. So I think it's nice to be able to talk to you guys about what you guys do. Sure. And so, uh, yeah, uh, definitely a lot of moving parts within the uh, criminal justice system here in the community, and, and Amber is a very important part of that. So it is a good opportunity for us to explain that to the public. Yeah, without a doubt. And uh, Sheriff, is there anything else? I know. Um, you had wanted to touch on. Uh, obviously, we've seen it, unfortunately, in the headlines in the last several weeks. Um, yeah, in light of the, news, yeah, yeah. In light of the uh, recent shootings, uh, you know, throughout the country, especially in uh, in Texas and Louisiana, of law enforcement officers uh, senselessly gunned down just for being police officers. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's very troubling and, and very alarming to. Uh, I know the chief as well. But having said that, I just want to let the community know here in Jefferson County how appreciative we are of them, uh, how they've stepped up and, and let us know, let each individual law enforcement officer know how much they do appreciate us. You know, they obviously express that by a handshake and a smile or sending baked goods to the, uh, now not that I'm trying to encourage this at baked goods dinner, but. <laughs> you can encourage it. Yeah, I can encourage it, yeah. yeah. But, but we do appreciate that, and it, it does, I just want to let everybody know, it does mean a lot to us when, when people go out of their way to thank us for the job we do, especially, like I said, in light of what's, uh, what's going on throughout our country. So, uh, so we appreciate you very much as well. Yeah. Sure, and in fact, I had uh, lunch at Bob Evans yesterday and had my bill paid for. So if, if whoever did that is listening right now, and I don't know who it was, uh, thank you. But uh, it, it's just another example of, of what Sheriff Wallace is talking about as far as uh, um, we live in a great community, and it, and it makes us proud to be law enforcement officers in this community because of, um, fortunately, and we know that it could change at any moment, but uh, fortunately up until this point, we felt nothing but support from our local citizens, both in uh, Madison and Jefferson. County. You guys uh, all put your guys' lives on the line to take care of other people, so I think it's good to, good that you guys see that appreciation. I know uh, last week, uh, last Thursday, you saw a pretty cool event um, at the at the uh, at your office, correct? Yeah, we did. Uh, each year we host a uh, organization called Cops. It's a cycling group that uh, that uh, remembers uh, fallen officers. So each year they uh, they swing through the uh, sheriff's department. Uh, we do have a little memorial service for uh, Deputy Sutton who who died in the line of duty. Now we also remember all law enforcement officers who have uh, who have tragically passed away from one reason or another in law enforcement uh, this program remembers them and also raises money for their for their families uh, in support of them so it's a it's an outstanding program I think it's probably been going on maybe 10 years now and uh, we're appreciative of those folks to uh, continue to do this and uh, and uh, let us never forget the uh, sacrifice these guys and ladies have made in the line of duty and it's definitely a definitely a very cool program. We like to see those sort of things. Absolutely. Um, all right. Uh, so as we come to the end of our program, Sheriff Wallace, anything else you'd like to add before we go? Oh, like I said, I'd just like to, again, thank uh, thank the citizens for their support. Uh, you know, um, we are one team. I always say we are you and you are us, you know. So, um, you know, we appreciate uh, all the support, and uh, and we're just very grateful to live in a community that, uh, that does back us and support us. Yeah. Chief Thurston. Only well, final thing I'd like to say is uh, be wary of the heat. Um, you know, as, as hot as it's been, uh, take those precautions, stay hydrated, stay inside, stay cool where you can. Uh, and if you need uh, assistance with that, I know like the library is open and it's air conditioned or city hall or wherever you need to stop in and get cooled off, uh, definitely take those extra precautions. Yeah, we definitely want to see everybody stay safe out there. Uh, see ya.
temperatures in the 80s today, so we're a little cooler than we were last week, right. but still, uh, <laughs> still got to be on the lookout for it. Yeah, we got the thunderstorms coming in, so hopefully yeah. that'll uh, cool things down, and uh, and uh, we'll get ready for uh, maybe some fall type weather. We hope, huh? Yeah. Uh, coming soon, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. That's right, uh, Chief <laughs> Sheriff. Thank you so much for coming on. All right, AJ. Thank, thank you. you. That is Chief Dan Thurston from the Madison Police Department and Jefferson County Sheriff John Walls. Join us once again for Cop Talk, brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. Big thanks to the Chief and the Sheriff for coming on, and big thanks to Amber Finnegan from Jefferson County Community Corrections for coming on the program as well to talk about that program and all they do for the community. That will do it for this month's edition of Cop Talk. We do Cop Talk the last Tuesday of each month, so we will see you once again in the month of August. Big thanks to Anderson Sales and Services for sponsoring the program, and big thanks to you, the listener, for tuning in. We're going to throw it back to the music now on Works 96.7 WORX. I'm A.J. Brammer. Thanks for tuning in. And thank you for watching and listening to WORX Radio.